Welcome to the last lecture of the course. Today, I will guide you to the concluding lecture. During this course, we learned about technology, economics, governance, and management of energy systems in order to facilitate the energy transition. Today's lecture will be focused on revising what we have learned about energy systems in the status quo and the future outlooks of the energy systems in the 21st century. As we already know, during the energy transition, energy systems are expected to go through a series of complex changes, the technology itself, but also society and our everyday life. The challenges of replacing the existing fossil-based uh, energy system with a sustainable one are therefore not only technological and economic, but also institutional and operational. It concerns redesigning the energy system as a whole and steering this complex socio-technical energy system in the desired direction of sustainability, affordability, reliability, and safety. Even though climate change and resource depletion have been known subjects for decades, the past couple of years are marked by increased awareness about these issues. Nowadays, we can say that climate change has become an emergency. Of course, this means that the socio-technical aspect of energy systems must adapt even quicker than previously expected, posing one of the greatest challenges for society. This adaptation can be realized through a variety of technological and non-technological developments, such as electrification of economic sector, introduction of new energy carriers like hydrogen, or by setting up policies and regulations that help mitigate climate change. During the past five weeks, we have heard from experts in the field about the main changes needed for the energy transition. We started with the difference between energy sources and carriers, and we saw the importance of the length of the energy chain. By making the energy chain shorter, we can ensure that less conversion steps are involved and therefore reduce conversion losses. Typically, renewable energy sources have shorter energy chains, corresponding to lower energy losses compared to fossil fuels. With the increasing global energy demand, the importance of decreasing energy losses is vital, making renewables not only important for tackling climate change, but necessary for global energy security. Hand in hand with an increased share of renewables goes electrification. Not only does it allow us to reduce energy losses and increase energy efficiency, which is of vital importance for meeting global energy demand, but it can also lead to decreased carbon emissions as a replacement for fossil fuels. However, before electricity can reach its destination, it needs to be transported and there has to be sufficient energy infrastructure for this. An increased share of renewable energy and electrification also brings challenges. We need to adapt our energy infrastructure in order to overcome aspects such as congestion and blackouts, which are in essence grid capacity problems. Aside from extra infrastructure creation and the challenges that come with planning, there are other solutions. Peak demand doesn't always correspond to peak supply of renewable energy. Energy storage and demand response can pose as a solution, but we need to integrate them in the energy sector. Another solution could be the introduction of a microgrid. This is a small, self-contained network that serves a local area with energy. This forms an optimal solution for areas that are not easy to be connected to the large grid, like islands or remote cities, or as an option for vital infrastructures, like hospitals or communities. By using their own electricity, they are not dependent on centralized electricity supply when the grid congestion is cut, for example. The increasing share of locally produced and stored renewable energy reduces grid congestion and the need for grid reinforcements. Furthermore, with the adaptation of current policies, consumers can be even cheaper off as you don't need to buy electricity from an energy supplier anymore and you produce it yourself. If we take this step of decentralization a bit further, and we do not only generate electricity ourselves, but also produce heat and other energy resources locally, we pave the way towards a local energy community. Communities can organize their energy themselves, independently from suppliers. 
This can be done by selling and buying energy from your neighbors through local energy exchanges and forming peer-to-peer -peer energy system. Electrification and decarbonization have already been spreading quickly to some sectors, mainly the power sector. In order to accelerate this process, we have to aim for system thinking. Only by analyzing the whole system, understanding interconnections, considering multiple perspectives and actors, we can realize appropriate policies to support the energy transition. Aspects of sector coupling will become very important in the future, when the share of renewable energy further increases. Problems are expected to arise when solar or wind generation is low, but consumption is still high. By using sector coupling in such situations, we can assure to allocate energy in the best possible way and use the energy system fully. However, efficient sector coupling requires switching to a smart system that allows for an increase in the overall efficiency of energy system. As we have seen in some of the lectures, smart systems include a wide range of smart technologies that can allow us to smoothly change our day-to-day -day behavior and adjust our lifestyle to the needs of future energy systems. Numerous challenges of the energy transition are ahead of us, and experts all over the world are working on a variety of solutions to overcome these challenges and make this transition successful. In this course, we tried to bring some of the problems closer to you and show you the latest innovations in the field of future energy systems. We hope you enjoy this course and that you will take uh, the knowledge you gained out in the real world.